you can still see them like blink into existence when do you think have people gotten tired of obbies i know that sounds like a weird question but like you know there was like a point where roblox was seemingly full of like you know obbies tycoons um and you know simulators were still kind of popping off and now it's like every single game on roblox that's popping off is just some version of a simulator, right? There's very few actual obbies that are popular right now. And so why is this, right? Well, I mean, the simple answer is that they're just repetitive and boring. Every single obby didn't try to innovate. Every single obby that, you know, was posted onto Roblox was just there because like, oh, obbies are popular, so I'll make my own, right? But the thing is, what nobody was thinking is, okay, like the only reason this obby is popular is because obbies are just popular in general. But the issue here is that, okay, now obbies are no longer popular. And then their obby just ends up like dying alongside millions of other obbies that are basically just like carbon copies of one another and just in my opinion i think that's very good you might be disagreeing right now but honestly bro if a game just exists to be a copy of another game i don't think that's good at all and so i was thinking if i wanted to make an obby i would make it something really interesting and actually something that basically innovates gameplay so in a way this video is also going to be a tutorial on how to make an actual fun and innovative game and not some stupid like simulator garbage or whatever and so the interesting thought of a quantum mechanic obby came into my mind now in case you don't know i made a video where i basically just like showed people how to make a part that can be detected like you know when you're looking at it and whenever you're looking at it then it disappears so it kind of made this interesting mechanic where like it would only exist when nobody would see it and so i was just thinking what if we do the same thing but for an obby now the main thing for us to do is to actually script a system which detects a part so even though i talked about this in my previous video let me actually show you how this stuff even works right like how can i detect like whenever a part is being watched so what we need to do first of all is we need to make a local script the reason i'm using a local script by the way is because like we need to actually access the player's camera right because obviously we can't know what the player is looking at without accessing their camera but the issue here is that the camera is a local thing so this isn't something i'm able to do on a server script because we can't get the current camera right it, it does it doesn't let us do that but it does let us get the current camera on a local script so that's exactly what we're gonna do so what i'm thinking we can do is just we can use run service dot render step which basically will just fire every single time the server updates and the way that we check whether the part has been seen or not is we just say workspace current camera world to screen Point. And then it needs the position, which can be workspace, wait for child, part, dot, position. And what this function will actually give us is two things, right? So it's going to return the screen location and depth, which we don't really need, and whether this point is in the bounds of the screen. So this is what we do need. So basically, the first thing that it gives us is useless, so I can just say like underscore. But then the second thing that it gives us is important, so we can call it on screen, like so. So like in one line, we're basically creating two variables. And so this on screen will be equal to false if it's not on screen, and true if it is on screen. And so just to test, we can actually print on screen, like so. And so if I play the game right now, false, right? Because it's not on screen. And then if I look, now it's true, and now it's false. Now something to show you right now is that even though we see the part, it's still saying false. And the reason it's doing that is because when we're getting the part's position, it's only getting its middle position. So as long as the middle of the part is, you know, visible by my camera, it's gonna keep printing true. The moment that the middle stops being visible and we can like see the sides, then it says false. So what we need to do is not only check for the middle of the part, but also check for all four top corners. And I know that sounds kind of scary, but really all we have to do is we just need to take the size of this part. So right now the size is 15, right? And then we need to divide that size by two. So we get 7.5. And then the way we get two points is we just take its position and then we add 7.5 and then we subtract 7.5. So that gives us two points on the x axis, and then we can do the same thing for the z axis, where we, you know, divide this by two, it's gonna be one, then we add one, so that's gonna be 19, that's gonna be our first point, and then we subtract one, which is gonna be 17, which is gonna be our second point. So then what I'm thinking we do is we can just take this, right, and we can just move it over here. So local pose is equal to workspace wait for child part dot position. Okay, so that took a little while, but what I did here was I basically just created uh, our point. So I created our four points that are going to be on top of the part. And then we have also the points that's in the middle. So in total, we have five whole points that we can start checking. And so then what I'll do is I'll basically do this, you know, world to screen point. But then I'll do it with all five positions. Now, there definitely is an easier way of doing this, but look... Basically, what we're doing here is we're getting all of our five on screens. And really, all we need to do right now is just ensure that at least one of these is true. And yeah, so let's actually try this right now. Let's see if it works. And it's going to print false. Okay. And yeah, look at that. Yeah. See? 
And so now that we know that this works, how can we actually turn this into an obby? And yeah, so I just made like a quick demo of obby basically, and uh, all of the parts are inside this folder called quantum parts. And so here the thing is, right, instead of going through just this one part and actually just doing this for, you know, the one part, we have to take this code like so. And I'm thinking we can turn this into a function. Okay, so local check part. Okay, so we're going to check the part and we're going to give it this code. And so then what it's going to ask for is the part to check and so we're going to give it the part to check and then we're going to replace workspace wait for child part with the actual part to check there we go and so then what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through so for i v in workspace wait for child quantum parts get children do we're going to say task dot spawn which basically allows us to create a new function without having to wait for the old one to finish so for example like usually what people do is they just make a function and, and they just run it but the problem here is that what if this function takes like a little while and then just halts all of the functions like ahead of it. So basically what this does is it makes the function on its own separate line so that all of the other functions don't have to wait for it. So we can, you know, call the function and then we just give it the actual part, which in this case is V like so. And yeah, so I just added a thing where like it actually changes like the visibility of the part. So if any of these are true, like if at least one is true, then the part will be invisible, else it's going to be visible, right? But the issue here, though, however, right, and this is actually pretty interesting, is that if I look at it right now, right, it might look like it's working, right? But look at that. Look at that. It's like, they're still somewhat showing up. And even here too, look, right? So as you can see on the side, like as I'm, you know, shifting the camera, you can still see them like blink into existence. And honestly, I feel like the issue here is just that we're dividing the size by two, which I think is a little too much. Let's try 1.5. Okay, honestly, let's just try 1.5 for all of them. And yeah, let's just actually try it out. There we go. Look at that. See, immediately I'm like shifting my camera around. I don't see the parts at all. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that uh, that might be a little, a little bad. But here's the thing. Look, we can just lock the... Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, so that actually might be a slight issue. And so I think the way for us to actually fix this is to basically make it so that whenever it subtracts, then it's a two. So let's actually try this, right? This is going to be a two. Um, and then let's say these will be twos as well. Okay, so to be completely honest, I'm not too sure what to do right now. Uh, I think we can just do honestly a brute force method because like, you know, I want this to work on every single part, preferably. But since it's clearly not, since something's going wrong, I think we could just add another point that's going to be like, around over here it's gonna be like in the front of the part because let's see what axis is this right so this is originally it's at 19 and then when i moved here it's at a 20 so this direction is the positive z direction okay so you know what we need we need another position that's right this is awful code and i forgot to put an equal sign so basically i'm gonna make an equal position but what i'm also gonna do is i'm just gonna increase this position by vector 3.new and so x is gonna be zero uh, we can increase it by let's say one y and then increase it by one z as well and so then we can just copy this line and so let's try this out oh okay new problem <laughs> okay so we need one more check but for the bottom okay that's actually fine i can work with that okay so honestly we just need to make another point but make it down right i mean this is probably like there's probably easier ways of doing this i'll be completely honest i'm i'm like i guarantee that there probably is like some guy who's gonna be like actually uh, this is how you do it or something right but like yeah uh let's do a negative one actually yeah negative one negative two and then we do the same thing where it's just gonna be another position i'm so sorry for my game having to run all of this um or on screen seven look at that can I really just not see them? Fine, yes! Yes! All right, so this is where we need to do a quick thing and actually understand what we're trying to do here, okay? So now we're successfully detecting every single part that's on the obby, right? The problem here, however, is that we're doing all of this on the client, okay? Because look at this, right? If I switch to the server, we see that the parts are here and they exist, very nice. However, if I look at the parts, right? And you know, they don't exist anymore, right? Yeah, so they, they don't exist right now. But if I go to the server, they're still here, okay? And in fact, actually, I'm still able to jump on these parts, right? I mean, let me, let me try and find the... Um... Yeah, see, there we go. Look at that. So the parts are still collidable, right? Like, I'm still able to actually step on top of a part. And so we need to change this, okay? But the thing is, we cannot change this in the local script because we actually want other players to see uh, the changes that happen. And okay, and if I try jumping, right? 
Yeah, look at that, I just went through the part. And the very last thing that I think we should be doing is that whenever a player actually touches a part, then it should no longer turn invisible. So I'm thinking, what do we... So the way we can do this is actually just make a brand new folder, right? And we can call this like, um, touched parts, like so. And so what I'm thinking is that whenever a part inside of here actually gets touched, then what's going to happen is that it's going to turn green and then get sent inside the touch parts folder. And the reason I made a brand new folder is because, as you may remember, what this script does is it only checks the parts inside of quantum parts folder. So any parts that are not inside of quantum parts will not be checked, right? Meaning they're not going to turn invisible or, you know, they're not going to have their collision removed. And so we can actually loop through this folder right in this server script. So I can say 4i, v in workspace, wait for child, quantum parts, get children. We can say v.touched, right? Connect function like so and then it's going to give us the other part that touched uh the v and so we just need to quickly check that this actually is a player like i, I know in, in this context of the game like it has to be a player because nothing else can touch it but just in case you know let's just do a quick security check if not other parts dot parents find first child humanoid then return end meaning that if this part's parent does not have a humanoid then this part does not belong to a player meaning we shouldn't do anything but then if it actually does belong to a player well then what we could say is we could just say v dot color is equal to color three dot from rgb and then let's just give it a nice greenish color like so and then we'll say v dot parents is equal to workspace wait for child touched parts and so yeah let's actually try this out okay so as you can see right now i cannot see anything and if i jump over here Okay, so that <laughs> that kind of works. Okay, how about this? To actually ensure that the player is above the part and not like falling beneath it, how about we actually get the head of the character, right? So we can say local head is equal to other parts dot parents dot head. And then we're just going to check if the y axis of the head is more than the y axis of the part, which means that like if the head is just above the part. And we can check this by saying if head dot position dot y is more than v dot position dot y then we do all of this or actually no what we could do is just check if it's uh less than the position like so then we can return and like so so let's actually see how well this works okay yeah, look at that. See, it doesn't work. Awesome. And the very last thing I'm thinking is let's make this base plate into a thing that sends our player back to the spawn location, which is honestly a really quick script. I can actually just copy this line of code right now. And then inside of the base plate, just insert the script over here. Here we can just say script.parents.touched. And so we'll just remove all of these lines and then we'll just say other parts.parents.humanoid roots part.position is equal to script.parent.position plus vector3.new, let's say zero. Three, zero. So all we're doing here is we're saying like, okay, the position of the player is going to be equal to the, um, oh, sorry, wait, not the script.parent. I meant to put the spawn location. So workspace uh, dot spawn location dot position. So we're going to position it to the spawn location. And then I'll just add on three studs, like on the Y axis, just because the humanoid root part is like in the middle of the character. And so if I don't add this, it's basically going to spawn the middle of the character inside the middle of the spawn location. But like, I don't want to do that. I want it to spawn above the spawn location. And let's actually see if this works, right? So if I go on the base plate, there we go. Awesome. And it's finally time for me to try and complete this obby, which honestly, I don't even know, bro. Let's try. Oh. Oh. Okay. And two. Okay. Three. All right, so half of the obby is successfully completed. And as you can see, we can actually see the shadows of the next part. But when I look up, they're gone. So we have to continue blindly trusting in my ability. Whoop. Okay. Whoop. Okay. Whoop. Okay. I think that's it, right? Let me try. Yeah, okay, that might be it. And literally just like that, we just completed the world's first ever quantum obby. I mean, okay, that, that, that sounds kind of like too advanced, I think. But like, point is, remember what I talked about in the beginning that like games are like just stupid now? Like, you know, obbies especially, they're like, they're all the same, bro. So this is my take on basically making an obby that's actually more fun, has more potential, and actually takes longer to code. Instead of just like going to the toolbox and just looking obby. You can do this. Literally, there are, ob like, people literally, like, use obbies, bro. And yeah, so this is pretty fun to make. Again, after this video goes live, I better not see any stupid obbies, bro. I'm telling you right now, if I see any obbies, I'm gonna go crazy, bro. I'm gonna start licking stuff. Uh, as always, <laughs> we are back to basics. We're not back to basics, there's a script. There we go. Now we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.